Hey all, it's k from the Method Ray team here. Today we'll I will be talking about how to improve yourself as a DPS player, what are some of the differences between a role first raider and a bit more of a casual player. Personally, this topic is quite dear to me, as when I joined Method, I came from a very casual guild, around 950 world rank, and it took me quite a while to learn and adapt to the standards of Method. So I will be talking about 5 specific points in this video that I found very important and helped me improve along the way of joining them. In the end of the day, it comes down a lot to actually preparing before the raid and having a very good attitude. So the first thing is that is really important to improving your overall DPS is actually research. You cannot play a class and spec without knowing the ins and outs of the spec. Knowing where you have to where X talent uh, shines and X trait shines is extremely important to know, especially for world first progress where we often have to make choices not even based just on the fight but also based on uh, our tactic that we create. For example, on Jaina, Shadow Bird Death for Shadow Priest was a very viable option for the tactic we were running, which was just nuke him down in phase 3. However, because of our tactic decision with us bloodlusting at the wall, cleaving the wall and the boss at the same time, it actually ended up being that although Shadow Bird Death might in theory be better in the last phase, and we tried it for 20 to 25 pulls, just because of how we played the wall, Shadow Bird Death wasn't actually worth it. We gained a lot more cleave from actually running the spirit talent. With the trades that we were running, it just ended up being a massive damage loss. So, although we might actually wear like, okay, this talent could be viable, we still ended up trying it just because we knew the, the strength of the talent. Also, knowing your rotation blindly is extremely important. A class that has a lot of decision making gains really, really big DPS from actually like knowing your rotation. There's gonna be quite a lot of time spent, for example, playing Elemental Shaman. You have a lot of choices to make. So, you have a full resource to bar, you have a buff for a big ability. You have several smaller CDs running, and you ended up getting a proc at the same time. So you have to choose out of four or five different things to press, and you have to know exactly which one is going to give you the maximum amount of DPS. Every single time that this sub pops up and you make a wrong choice, you in theory losing DPS, and performing it correctly will gain you DPS. Not a lot of people can do this on the fly. Generally, on dummies, people can do this pretty well. However, when you're actually in a fight, dealing with mechanic, dealing with movement, this becomes a lot more difficult to actually put in. And the big thing is that this will take a lot of focus away from you. So, while you might be able to farm this on the dummy, staring at your weak RS, are you going to be able to do it in raid, with mechanics going on, and do, dealing with boss mechanics? These are some extremely big things that A, researching really helps, so looking at spreadsheets, making sure that you're completely up to date on the extra rotation, knowing all the values of the spells, is extremely important. And a very, very good place to find these things would be Discord servers, websites, spreadsheets, or just even watching streams and seeing how the higher end performance of those classes and specs to deal with certain situations. So for example, if you're an elemental shaman, there's the shaman discord, which has a lot of experts on the specs. There is uh, the website Storm Earth and Lava, which is made by the theory crafters and has a lot of baseline information for you. And then I know a handful of PvP, Raid and Mythic Plus shamans streams that I can watch if I feel like it. Maybe you see them run certain talent setups, maybe you see them run certain trade setups, you know, that you can actually think of and then try to understand why they run it. Sometimes there might be small community overlaps in terms of guides. Uh, for example, there is Warcraft Priests and Focused Will. If a situation like this occurs, I generally turn in, turn it into a stream and be like, hey, which one do you follow? Is there any big differences? Why do you prefer it? And most of the time, high-end players can give you a good solution on that one. So the second point I want to touch on would be the UI. Now, while I think this is mostly a personal topic, I do actually recommend people to check it out. There's a lot of different types of, types of UIs going around. And you really have to find something that works for you. A very common UI would, for example, be we car us in the middle, health bar on the left, enemy health bar on the right. This is, for example, something that I run, Reckons runs, Nurgle runs, Snorkelis runs, etc. Some people have the health bars under the weak RS, but the general rule is most people, not everyone, has a couple of weak RS under the character, and then the health bar somewhere close to the weak RS. This is done because people are able to focus on the character, so where the mechanics are happening, but still have all procs, abilities, CDs close by, and actually just being able to look at it while looking at the character. They don't have to either guess a CD or they don't have to look at the bars, which can take away focus from your actual character paint and mechanics. There's also some things you can do with big wigs. Before, for example, before every single tier, I go through the big wigs and I remove non-important mechanics. I remove mechanics that are only for healers, only for tanks, so I don't have 
20 bars with mechanics that don't matter to me. I just have the six bars that actually matter to me. I try and get a color system. So for example, at spawning on opulence, at spawning on drong, they all have a different color. For example, I, I all made a, a blue bar instead of the general red bar. That means when I look at my bars of the big wigs that are all coming up, I can literally just see the blue bar with two seconds. I don't have to read the name, I don't have to focus on the name. I can just see a blue bar with 12 seconds and I know that those are going to be the ads. Then I also like to emphasize some class specific things. For example, the Siren Charm on Stormball, the one where the Siren will come down to and it will charm an enemy, try and throw him off the ship. I put this on emphasize for myself and for the different players because we were assigned to gripping the player if it got too close to the Siren that was going to get thrown off. So emphasizing this made it very, very clear to me who was actually getting charmed and I could make a very easy choice on if I had to grip him or not. Outside of class-specific weak cars, there's also weak cars for the actual raid, which is generally just sets of cast bars of the bosses or debuff trackers. Um, an easy example is Opulence left side, phase 1. On Mythic was a little bit hectic, there were many things going on at once, many things to dodge, beams to dodge, dodging the boss slam at the same time, making sure you don't run over people, and dispelling things as well, and you could get swapped in the trip in the mid, all of that. So. For me noticing, actually sometimes the swap was pretty difficult, you know, I missed it once, I didn't want to make that mistake again, I didn't die to it, but, you know, it was something that was risky. So, for me to make this impossible to miss, I just found a weak aura, I made it twice as big, and I put a glow on it. So, whenever I was getting swapped, it was the most outstanding thing, and I just knew, okay, in 6 seconds I'm going to get swapped. You know, it wasn't impossible for me to miss. Sometimes you can make a weak aura that will be a reminder. For example, Jaina, I had to do the master spells. We used four master spells on the big Nova. So just to make sure I could never miss it, I got someone to make me a weak aura that said, whenever she casts the, uh, the Nova, I have a weak aura pop up in my screen. Get ready to master spell. Really easy. Just please start using boss weak auras. You don't need boss weak auras because you fail a lot. The weak auras are there to prevent you to fail. I can guarantee you, every single player will get a benefit out of using boss weak auras and tracking debuffs and stuff. The last thing that I think is really impor important in terms of UI is tracking externals. If you're out of personals, you get a mechanic, you know, like Megatork, you don't have a personal anymore, you get the bomb, and soon he's gonna do his slam, you're gonna take a big amount of damage. If you don't have a personal, it's quite possible that you, that you might die there. Call for an Iron Bark, suddenly you're okay. Tracking them is just gonna make you able to see like what you actually need, and it's gonna prevent you from yelling, give me an external, and suddenly you have three externals on you, two of them are wasted. If I actually track externals, I can just be like, hey, hey Kona, give me an iron bark. This will probably prevent a couple of deaths. So the next thing is about accepting mistakes and also improving on them, even when it's actually not your own mistake. So for example, mid-raid, you're on the boss and you die to a mechanic. Now it's very easy to say, oh, my healer didn't heal me, to look at your death lock, you don't see healing for six seconds. My healers didn't heal me, it's their fault or someone ran into you with a mechanic, oh, he ran into me, it's their fault. But quite often or not, you could have prevented this death yourself by simply just playing better or being more knowledgeable. So what I do a lot when I die, you know, happens in farm raids or whatnot, you die to something, I look back and I see what could I have done. Did I get hit by a mechanic 10 seconds beforehand? Yes or no? Did I have health stone ready, health pot, personal? Could I have asked for an external? Yes or no? Even if you played completely perfect, so you didn't take damage for 20 seconds, you popped your health, such a personal, you know, you did all of this correct, why did you die? Maybe your heals were extremely busy, maybe someone screwed up with a mechanic, you know? Always look back at the death and see what you could have actually got, gotten better out of it. If someone screwed up or your healers were just really busy healing because a lot of damage is taken at that point, maybe you can help them assign CDs, maybe you can help them. There's generally always something that you can do, even if it's not your own personal gameplay, you know? Even if it's not your own personal thing. There's generally always something that you can do to help the raid out then. And trust me, being a good team player is a massive improvement on personal performance. Maybe if you were a paladin and you popped a lay of hands on that one guy earlier there, he wouldn't actually have died, you know? Like, there's so many small things that you can generally do just to make it easier either for you or for your raid. And this is something that people generally don't look back on. Generally people die, they'll blame it on something, they'll pull again and hope it doesn't happen again. Always look back at yourself and think, what could you have done better? Because that is the best way to learn. And learning more and actually being more aware of what you could have done is going to be a massive improvement on your total and performance. So, part number four on how to actually improve your DPS is movement. Movement is probably the most common thing on where people lose DPS from. 
A lot of people will stand somewhere, cast, realize that they're not standing correctly, interrupt the cast, move again, and you know, suddenly for 3 seconds, 4 seconds, you didn't cast anything. That's a really, really big DPS loss. Maybe a more experienced player will have some charges ready, some ability ready, some instant cast stuff ready, move to the correct spot instantly, and continue the cast, and they didn't lose a single thing of a single part of DPS. Maybe a tiny bit for the movement, but you know, they filled in the movement at least. So, for example, you have to run as an Affliction Warlock. Just before you had to move, you refresh your dots, then you have to move, and you dot again, because that's the only thing you can do on the move. Maybe a better player would have cast an extra Shadow Bolt, and then when he actually had to move, he refreshed them, basically meaning he didn't really have a DPS loss. This is something that takes a lot of practice, a lot of doing the fight, pulling it over and over and over again, but you can actually really play this well with thinking ahead quite a lot. So for example, Jaina, when you come out of the intermission, there's quite a lot of movement. And at some point, you know, when you get out of the phase, depending on where she spawns, you just have a full rotation. So for example, as a Shadow Priest, I would go into Void Form, Void Bolt, shield myself. While having a movement speed of Body and Soul, I would be able to Shadow Word Pain the boss, Shadow Word Pain the cag that we were breaking, Void Bolt the boss again, shield myself again. You know, and that's like 5 good seconds of actually filling in my movement with a movement speed increase actually getting closer to the barrel so I don't have to move later on when I can't fill all those things in I actually used five proper seconds of moving there this is a pretty big DPS increase and this is really difficult to do on the first few pulls but it's definitely something that you want to think ahead of when you get to a fight and actually getting a really good pattern of how to move to certain things especially fights like Jaina there's just a lot of quite long movement set uh, like five six seconds of your full movement and having a good plan for every single part of movement will increase your overall dps by a substantial amount so the last thing which is a quite small topic but extremely important is practice straight up just practice and practice and practice this is not a joke the only way how you're going to get good at something is by repeating it so warlock demonology you know after progress became really popular everyone in method kind of started playing demonology when they had the gear for it. We don't just like read up and go into a raid and just start hitting our buttons and do amazing DPS. I mean, I've watched Jimmy, you know, Fragments. He practiced the demonology, you know, just how to play it properly. I spent a good 30 minutes to an hour practicing demonology. You know, everyone kind of just goes and makes sure that they actually know the things. And the only way how you actually learn the class and spec is by practicing. And dummies are really, really good for just practicing the baseline rotation. Before progress, you know, this was, this was my first uh, tier progressing as a Shadow Priest. I made sure that I knew every single in and out of Shadow Priest. I practiced the normal rotation. I practiced multi-dotting, you know. I even practiced Surrender to Madness for about 30 minutes, just hitting dummies, doing it over and over again, talking to people that have, you know, I talked a lot to Fickland beforehand, making sure that I had all of these things correct. I talked a lot to Theory Crafters. I read a lot of spreadsheets and stuff. Just making sure that everything up to date and then just put it into practice, just hit dummies. Uh, beforehand, I would rewatch PTR thoughts of me playing Shadow Priest or Fickler playing Shadow Priest, you know. And even when watching PTR thoughts, you would still like look at like small class specific things as well. So, Tremor Toad of Roskatan, my controls on Jaina, Master Spells on Jaina, you know. Those were all kind of figured out before we even got to the boss that we could do. In general, being prepared is super important. Coming into raids, flask pots, practice your class, knowing what's up are all super, super important to actually playing the raids correctly. You can't play correctly without actually practicing stuff. I hope some of these tips can help you guys understand how I make sure to stay at the top of my game. Although most of these tips might not actually be gameplay tips, in my opinion at least, a lot of WoW is actually just about researching and making sure you are 100% prepared and aware of what you actually need to do inside of the raids. I hope all of you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you like the video, leave a comment, and make sure you subscribe to the Method YouTube channel for future content. Again, this was Kena from the Method Raid team. Have a great day.